Hi there, my name is John Maybe, and welcome to Hippo Shorts. In this segment, we're going to talk about vitamin B deficiencies. So B-complex vitamins are essential for normal growth and metabolism, blood forming effects, and normal neurologic functioning. They're water soluble, absorbed in the GI tract, excreted by the kidneys, and they're not stored though in the body. Specific vitamin B deficiencies is not likely to occur in isolation. Rather, when it does occur, it's likely that there's a deficiency of multiple v B vitamins, along with other nutrients in a setting of general malnutrition. Having said that, in the slides we're about to show you, we've tried to condense down the key risk factors and key clinical findings associated with the most common vitamin B deficiencies. So let's take a look at, these, uh, at this table. So with thiamine, or vitamin B1, we see the key risk factors are ethanol. The key clinical findings are beriberi. That has cardiovascular effects, peripheral neuropathy, and it's also associated with Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Niacin deficiencies is associated with ETOH yet again. We see here pellagra. So pellagra is associated with the three Ds, dermatitis, diarrhea, and dementia. Pyridoxine is associated with ethanol again and INH. That's a key buzzword for test purposes. So here we see the clinical findings are peripheral neuropathy and seizures. Folic acid or folate is associated again with ethanol and methotrexate. Key clinical findings here, neural tube defects and megaloblastic anemia. Lastly, we have cobalamin or vitamin B12. Here we see the risk factors are ethanol, yet once again, and pernicious anemia. The key clinical findings with this are megaloblastic anemia and peripheral neuropathy. That wraps it up for this segment. For more information on this or other topics, come on down to hippoeducation.com and we'll see you next time.